Edpuzzle is a great program for you to use during your e-learning and digital learning days. What this program lets you do is pick any video, whether it's on YouTube or it's one that you've created yourself using QuickTime or another program on your computer, and it allows you to embed questions, comments, um, and audio recordings directly into that video and as students complete it then they are forced to answer the questions. So I wanted to show you today how to set it up. So first thing you're gonna do is if you already have an account you're just gonna log in otherwise create an account. I already have one so I'm gonna log in and I'm a teacher and I'm gonna log in with Edpuzzle. Now this is showing you some trending um, videos that have already been created. And that's another thing that I love about Edpuzzle is that you don't actually have to create the content. They almost have like their version of the Canvas Commons. Um, and so you can go to the Edpuzzle right here on the left hand side and see all kinds of videos that have already been created. You can see this one's about incomplete dominance and co-dominance and that there are 16 questions or notes included in this and it lasts for 12 minutes and 19 seconds. And so you can look up, um, you know, pronouns. I'm gonna do um, a lesson on pronouns. Well, here you go. Here's a whole bunch of them and you can go through and you can preview them so that you can see, is that something that you want to use or, um, you know, you can also find the video yourself and then create your own, but um, using something that somebody else has already done usually works out. You can edit those videos, so if you don't like the questions or you don't think the questions worded correctly, um, you can always delete those and use them differently. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. So here's my video and my content. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to edit. And now here are all of the questions. And I can go to that open-ended question and I'm gonna copy it. And what that does is it puts it into my personal content. If you're using a video from YouTube that you created, I'm gonna show you my YouTube channel. This is my personal preference. I always have my videos unlisted. Um, when you go to your video, it gives you the link right here and if you copy this link and you go back to Edpuzzle and you choose YouTube, you can paste that link and it brings your video up and then you're able to go through and I'll show you here in a minute how you go through and you um, edit the video. So even if your video is unedited, you can still use it here in Edpuzzle. So how do you edit a video? So let me go back to my content. And here's the video that I just pulled over. Um, oh, let me go back. So when you're here in YouTube, you can also search the name of the video if it's a video that somebody else did. Um, they've got TED Talks. They've got all the crash course videos here in their own little um, section. So they've already filtered those out from YouTube for you, which is amazing. These videos are fantastic. I don't know if you've ever used Crash Course in your in your classes, but they do a really good job. Um, and so supply and demand is something I'm gonna be talking about after spring break. What a great time to talk about supply and demand. Um, and so anyway, you can find all of the Crash Course ones here. So editing your video. So when I go to my content, here's the video I want to edit. You click on the check mark and then down here you can choose to assign it, edit, move to a folder, duplicate, unselect, or delete. Folders are right here. This is something that can help you kind of keep organized. I use this for um, all of my classes and then <laughs> you can see some cattle things here. I use this for 4-H as well. This is how we get in our 4-H meetings. We actually do ours digitally through Edpuzzle. So I keep mine organized by folders, but you don't have to do that. So I'm going to edit. And then here you have some choices. If this is a video that somebody else made and you want to cut off part of the beginning, 
or part she of pops the in at the end of class and she went into so there's me and my daughter Emma you can cut off the beginning and you can trim the end as well um, by dragging these okay um, that helps especially on some videos they tend to you know put some advertisements or things at the end talking about you could watch this on our YouTube channel or this on our YouTube channel and so that helps voice over so if somebody recorded a video and you loved all of the graphics and everything, but you hated how they explained something, you can theoretically replace the existing audio with something of your own. It seems like a lot of work, but you can. So then questions. So there's different types of questions. There's multiple choice. There's open-ended, and then there's just a note where you can add a written comment, an audio note, or both. Um, and I will do this sometimes if I'm using a video that I had recorded previously and I'm assigning it to a new group. Um, and we've talked about something different in class. I'll add an audio note, like, don't forget in our class we talked about this. So what you're going to do is get to a place in the video where you're ready to add a question and then you pick which type you want. Um, I suggest multiple choice questions simply because Edpuzzle will grade it for you. It goes right into Canvas for you and then that way you don't have to go any back and forth between the two programs. Um, if you choose the open-ended questions, you, all you have to do is go into your Canvas gradebook and hit post to power school and you're good to go. Um, so here are multiple choice questions. You type your question, type your responses. You can add as many choices as you want. So you can make this true, false, or multiple choice with A, B, C, D. So, um, and whichever question's the right one, you pick with the green check mark, similar to Canvas. Um, and so that's a multiple choice question. An open-ended question is where they would type their response. If you pick open-ended questions, you do have to come back to Can or to Edpuzzle to finish grading those before they flow over to Canvas. One, two, three, and then the last one is a note. And here's where you can type or you can record an audio and it will embed it here into the video. So once your content is created here in Edpuzzle. Yes. And I can edit that question if I want to, or I can delete it if I just think it's a bad question. And so you can go through those videos that other people have created and edit those so that it fits better with what you do in your class. You're actually done. All you have to do is create it. Okay, you don't actually have to assign it here in Edpuzzle. Before you leave Edpuzzle, come up here to your account and select your name and right here where it says school you need to make sure that you've selected your school and your LMS and when you do this it's going to give you a consumer key and a shared secret key this information you need here in Canvas so when you come to Canvas I'm going to do this in my test course in my Edpuzzle course. You go to Settings, Apps, and search for Edpuzzle. Select Edpuzzle, add the app, and then here's where you're going to put that consumer key and that shared secret key. And this is what lets Edpuzzle and Canvas talk to each other. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to copy this. Copy this. And add the app. Okay. How do you assign an assignment? You go to modules. You click on add an assignment. We're going to name this Ed Puzzle. Click on the assignment. Edit.
Okay, so a couple things. When you are picking your video, um, Canvas is going to leave this as a zero. And so I tend, I will pay attention to how many questions I'm asking. And, you know, if it's just something, a little in-class thing, I might give them one point for each question and they get five points. Or if you're doing this for a DLD, maybe you want to ask more questions or make it worth more, more points. Um, one thing I didn't go over, let me come back here to my Edpuzzle account. So I did this for my class. Here's a video of me. It's five minutes long talking about saving versus investing. It's exactly what we would have talked about in class. You'll notice I didn't ask any questions here, but I still assigned it. And what I did, I'll show you. So I'm going to make this assignment worth five points. And you come down to Submission Type and you select External Tool, Find, Locate Edpuzzle. And now it's going to show you all of your content that you've created in Edpuzzle. So I'm going to select this video. Now, if you see, if you're paying attention, this video has eight questions. This video doesn't have any, okay? I'm gonna to explain to you why I don't have questions there. So I'm gonna click watch. It lets me preview it just to make sure that, yep, this is the right video, and I'm going to assign it. Now at this point, you can prevent skipping. What this does is it, <laughs> the students can't skip the video forward to just the question and then answer the question. They are actually forced to listen to the video. Um, you can turn on closed captioning here by putting this over. I leave this alone. I leave ca closed captioning off simply because, again, I want the students listening to the video and otherwise they tend to not. They tend to do a bunch of other things and just randomly read information across the screen and then try to answer the questions. And so I leave, clo I leave closed captioning off. So I'm going to sign it and then select. You can sync this to PowerSchool and then pick who you assign it to. So I'm gonna save and publish this. So what does this look like in a live class? So in this class, I assigned Edpuzzle and I assigned that same video that you just saw. And what it does is it actually will track who has watched my video. So if I'm looking, this student Watch the first two, because they got the five points. They got to the end of the video. They did not watch the last video. If I go to the actual assignment, this is what it looks like on my side. So here's my video. Here are my student names, and it tells me if they watched it, how much of it they watched, when they last watched it, and did they actually turn it in. And so you can see, now this is my green-white students. Today is a white day, so maybe they'll get to it. But this person started it yesterday and didn't finish it. This person just started it. But then you can see all of these people have watched it, and it tells me what time they watched it. So when you have actual questions embedded, it does look a little different. Um, and so this is one that I did in my econ class. Again, you can see these people never accessed it. These students did. Um, but then, so this person watched the whole video, but they only got 50 out of, they got a 50%. This person got a 63%. And so they answered some of those questions incorrectly. Um, and so again, it scores it for you. When it pulls the grades over into your Canvas gradebook, this is what it looks like. So I had made that assignment worth 12 points. So those who got 100% got 12 points. Those who didn't, it scales down the points from there. So again, at this point, all you got to do is just go sync to um, PowerSchool and your grades are done. So your kids have gotten great content. Um, you can do this with videos that you've done yourself um, and it goes straight into Canvas for you. If you'd like to use a video that you created yourself, when you're here on My Content, you click on Add Content, 
and you can either create a video by recording it right now or you can upload a video and here's where you would pick your file if you get a message from a student <clears throat> that they are not able to watch their Edpuzzle video it is most likely because they're not in Chrome so that's always my first message back make sure you're in Chrome so um, again if you have a student struggling with Edpuzzle um, make sure that they're in Chrome <clears throat> you can have them also try to do it on their phone sometimes that works just as well so if you have any questions about Edpuzzle shoot me a message